What's up? This is Demrick. It's Jamie Madge Rock. Man, this is your man's OB Trice. This is Adlib. Yo, what up? This is Specs One. This is Fresh K. Hot Rock's the motherfucking Scrat MC. Breaking Records. Breaking Records Radio out here. This is Breaking Records Radio. Check them out, man. All right, Breaking Records Radio in the place to be. You know what it is. We got two special guests from the Trailer Park Boys with us right now. What up? The fuck's up? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Where the fuck are we, yo? <laughs> See, the thing is, I don't watch Trailer Park Boys, so I don't know. You, how you got nothing to go off on that. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's up? <laughs> All right. What's but, up? But to be honest with y'all, we have two very special guests with us right now. We got the three to six show, two important roles, or two important figures in the Toronto hip hop scene. Mr. Well, the second time I was talking to you, Mr. Yes. Chris Got Rocks yes, yes. and DJ Shortcut. Uh, it's actually our second time talking too, but our first but, interview right, we got a little right, too right, juicy, right, if you right, know right, what I'm saying. Right, right. It's interesting that you say that because Shortcut and I have been doing the show for about two years. Yeah. And he doesn't talk to me at all. I can't get all he does is play records. No, so you don't see your this. Your second too time often? talking to you him? You don't see this yeah. Damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, for sure. Yo, Chris is bad, yo. <laughs> I can't believe that shortcut. <laughs> We're gonna be seeing some good. three to six feud happening yeah. right now. This is where the trailer park good. comes out. Yeah. Fuck These guys really are the trailer park boys. We're not joking. <laughs> Alright. No, but tell us a little bit about the three to six show. Or I guess tell the people who don't know, because we know all about it. Go ahead, shortcut. You talk so much. <laughs> hey. Um it's 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 just a show we started as far as wanting to promote local artists, giving them a chance to come through, support their music. Um, Chris actually hit me up just after meeting for the first time and he said let's do a live show. thought okay, no one else is doing a live show, let's, let's give something a little different to the Maximum FM. So we've been doing it for about two years like he said. We've, only, we've had a mad guest, we've had a lot of guests, like yeah, legends yeah. To, yeah. to your up and like to your no ones coming through. But we it's just all about supporting good music at the end of the day, that's what we're about. Simple as that. Supporting good music. If you're good, we'll play you. If you're not, there's other shows on Maximum FM for that, but I won't, I won't get into it. <laughs> yeah. I won't, I, I'll let Chris mention something about that if he wants to, but yeah. <laughs> the 3 to 6 show is just about promoting good music. Simple as that. And um, That's it. speaking about you saying about, about all the guests, who are some of your favorite guests that you guys have had on the show? For two different reasons though. For First off, I want to know who your favorite guest are you've had on the show. Just for like, damn, we've had him on the show. But also, just like your favorite actual interviews. Like, well, I just had a damn show. moment now. We just interviewed Divine Brown. And, uh, what? That's, like, yep. that's a little out of sure. our format because she's an R&B artist. Yeah. And more I think she might be the only R&B. I think she might be the only R&B artist we really ever had. Yeah, I mean, we've had a couple guys who like rap and sing. But yeah. That's not R&B to me. Yeah. Right. So Divine Brown was pretty big because. Uh, and thank to you, thanks to you for breaking records with you for yeah. looking that up. Word. But um, yeah, so that was a big moment for me. Because um, again, it's out of the format. You know, I've followed her career and she's a big deal. And I've, you know, I've worked with her a few times in other places. But to have her here, that was, that was pretty big. Fife Dog's another big one. That's and always, nice. always like the people you know, like your family. Like for me, it's like the Mishis and the Maestros. Yeah. Just and to have those that. people come through and just chill with me, that's always dope. Because that's a family thing, you know? But um... The second answer, I guess, you said in two ways. Yeah. The second way would be any artist that I can actually have a conversation with. Yeah. And actually, it's like they say something, and you can tell by conversating with them that they're they're actually an artist. Yeah. Right? They're not just a rapper or some dude trying to be a rapper. They're, they're like real artists, and they say the right things, and they have a character, and those are the best people to interview, because I don't prep for interviews. I just want to have a conversation. Yeah. And we talk about whatever, All right? So when you can do that with someone, and it's a good conversation, then those those are the people I like to talk to. Yeah. yeah. For me, Mishy. Yeah. Right now, as far as like in person interviews, we've had Maestro phone in, other big but for me, yeah, Mishy being here in person was was amazing. Like I respect her so much and what she's done. So yeah, that'd be at the top of my list right there. And as far as like content, with the same answer, or you got anybody else who like just as far as came through was just the most um, interesting person? Wow, there's a, oh man, there are a lot of artists who have come through who I might not have known before they came through, but then once I heard their music, 
the leave it. Yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, sh you know, this Stalin's probably yeah. one of those. Stalin, guys. yeah, for sure. Stalin, Stalin shit all yeah, the time. Stalin oh, yeah, Stalin like Absolutely my yeah. Stalin. After actually meeting him and having them be, I was like, Stalin's like one. He might be in my top like three now, as far three as like words. Toronto. Yeah, because I see, I love the work he's putting in, and he's just a great. He's just a like. He's just a a, a great person too. So to be able to get both those things and a, and a, an artist was. Well, that was it for me. I saw him, I'm like, this guy's amazing. And that's I, so important, man, what Shortcut is saying. Like, mm -hmm. The importance of being a real person and being able to communicate. Yeah. Yep. That's how you get places, is you build relationships. How you carry with yourself, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like even how we connected. We yeah. just, I don't know how we connected, but we connected, and yeah. I respected what you did, and we built a relationship. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I'm going to look exactly. out for you because we built that relationship. Yeah. Exactly. So the same thing with Shortcut. It's like he meets different artists that he doesn't know about. And then we had a music school, but then when he meets them and their personality is good, and you know, and the talk, vibe yeah. is there, yeah. and you can just talk, then that's really what gets you to that next level mm -hmm. those relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for so sure. So all the artists out there that don't go nowhere, I don't see you at no industry events and no parties. Don't. Yeah. Whatever. You're not doing it. <laughs> even if you're right shy, now, you're not even if it. you're not. If you're not yo, trust me, I hate, awkward. I hate, to be honest, and I've said this many times, right? So. I don't like, I like, networking to me is awkward. I don't like networking. I'm the same. But I figured out the formula and how to do it. Mm -hmm. And I understand now that you have to do it. Yeah. Right? Whether because I want to get a performance or I want to endorse your merchandise, I want to get free clothing or I want your money or whatever it is. Or I got a new product and I want network. you to listen to it. You got to network and build sure. relationships. Yeah. Sure. Right? All that cold call and unsolicited stuff, it doesn't really work. No. Right. right. It's a good lesson. I mean, do it and get the door slammed in your face and you learn from that. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I'm giving you the advance, like, build relationships. And, that, and that's another thing that's key, too, I don't think people realize is through every person you meet, they know a whole bunch of people that you've never met before. Every individual you meet is a potential door opening to thousands of other individuals. Exactly. And that's why it's so important, I think, the artists need to learn too, because a lot of artists, they'll get hot and just start to uh, get their head up their ass a little bit, and then they'll burn bridges. And that's mm -hmm. the worst thing you can do, because you could burn one bridge and it could fuck you the rest exactly. of your life. And I've learned that the hard way, and I'm sure a lot of people have. Well, but... Deli said it the best, man. I, don't, I can't think of the lyric exactly, but something about, he doesn't care about burning bridges, he's building tunnels. <laughs> so I have to agree with that, you know, sometimes, yeah. I don't look at it as burning bridges, I just look at it as like, this is what's really good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you do me wrong, then I'm going to tell you. Well, that's the thing wrong. too, yeah. Right? Don't put your morals aside. And I'm not going to tell you that your music's that, good if I really don't think it's good. Yeah. Right? So if me telling you your music isn't good, if you want to burn that bridge, that there was never good. a bridge there. Yeah. You understand? Sure, yeah. for sure. The bridge is there when you respect my opinion and then take my advice and build on that. Yeah. Right, so fuck burning bridges, man. I'm digging tunnels. That's how Word, up. Exactly. Word up. Word up. What up, belly? <laughs> <laughs> Capital profits. <laughs> Don't forget that. But no, I need to tell you about that. You guys are right, though. Like it is, the networking is so key, and a lot of people don't realize that. And a lot of people in today's age do just sit behind the computer and try to. That's the thing with the, with the digital, with this digital like age. Because yeah. back in the days, we can both speak on this. Like you had to go somewhere. Like, yeah, and you had to yeah I was people. everywhere back in the days. Yeah. I was at all the shows, wherever I might be, wherever I can get my face seen. That's where I was because. People saw me as just a guy who came out to hip hop shows, but then once I got into the DJ, it made things easier because they saw me coming out to these events. Yeah. It's like, and oh, when I said, you're a oh, now you're oh, a DJ. You okay, you must know what you're. You must know what you're talking. You must know what you're doing. Yeah. And then that's how the connection started through that way. It's at the end. It's about just networking and having your face seen because if you don't, it's it's, it's not gonna matter at the end of the day. It's all for nothing. Yeah, it's all for nothing at the end of the day because, <coughs> because they don't get to know you. They Yeah, they may know your songs or whatever, whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if they don't know you as a person, it doesn't really, really matter because every radio station or every, is going to play their songs. But if you can build that relationship, who knows what can come out from that? Yeah. Other things can stem from that so it's just human nature people yeah. look out for their own right exactly so you know, exactly if you can actually build relationships with people then they're gonna right. look out for you and vice versa but right people don't people aren't gonna look out for people over facebook messenger mm -hmm. you know what i mean like 
Exactly. How much? How much life do you really living in a false world, man? Yes, exactly. We do. False economy. To a degree, yeah. We false do numbers. for sure. Yeah, false numbers. This camera's false not even real. <laughs> it's not a real camera. It's a fake camera. <laughs> Can't see me. <laughs> We're trying to get that sponsorship. <laughs> SJ Kim, what up? SJ Kim, SJ Kim. Send us five or six more. Roche. We need five. Send me five or six more. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> Roche. We're looking for sponsors. Yeah, yeah we need Breaking sponsors. Breaking records, drink champs. Show, man. Hit us off. Hit us off, man. <laughs> but, um, so that's actually, I'd like to uh, just talk about your history a little bit shortcut because you've been okay. in the game for a long minute. We've talked to Chris before, so we have a yeah. bit of his history. I mean, this guy, but, yeah. this guy's a legend. Oh, he yeah. does. But tell us a little bit about how you got started. I know you've been in the game for a minute. Just for the love of music. Um, I've always wanted to be around it just because I love it, but I never knew how I wanted to be in it when I was a, a younger, obviously. So the opportunity just came to get some turntables to a friend and that's where it started. Really? As soon as I got, we were we were all hanging out, chilling, whatever, whatever. My man's like, yo, I got some old broken turntables that I want to sell. The light bulb goes off in my head because I didn't really, I knew I couldn't rap. I couldn't dance. <laughs> I had no real uh, graffiti skills. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I love music. Maybe I could actually play the music for people and, yeah. they'll, and, they, would, and they would like it. So as soon as he said he had these turntables, the light bulb goes off. I'm like, okay, let me try this. Boom, I get them, and that's, that's where it begins. From there, I progress to, like again, once I started DJing, that's when I went out more and more, networking with people, letting them know that now I'm a DJ. They know me as just a guy who's going to these hip hop shows. But then as soon as they see now, okay, you DJ too? Let's do this, or let's do this, or let's do this, and that's where it began. Yeah. So it's a 20 plus year ride, and now we're here, man, doing this radio thing. So it's crazy. It's great, man. It's amazing. And you were part of uh, the group Empire too. How? Not part of it. Okay, How started? You how started? It started through me, and my brother Soundwave. What up? Um, and a mutual friend. Who knew Adam Bomb? If you know who Adam Bomb oh, is, yeah. uh, Grammy Award, I mean, not Grammy, Juno Award winner, my mistake. Um, he knew him, and our friend knew that we DJed. So he was like, let's try and get you guys together and do something. So he tells us that, yeah, we got, I got this kid who's a nice rapper. I'm like, okay, whatever, bring him by. He brings him to the region. Adam's scared as, uh, can you swear? Yeah. I'm scared as fuck to come to come through, you know, this is when I was living in the region. I don't live there anymore. But he brings him to the house. My brother answers the door. He looks at him. He's like, this is Adam, you know, this is his first reaction. That's Adam? Okay. Brings him in. I'm in my, I'm in my old room playing records. Adam comes in. I see him for the first time. I'm like, this is the guy you're bringing through? <laughs> right? Um, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, no, up, I love you, Adam. Adam. I love you, though, know, but, yo, that's the, he was a, again, he was a skinny 15, I've known him for like, yeah, about 15 years. Yeah. Right? He's like a skinny 15 year old kid. But as soon as I heard him rap, I had, I like, to me, it was almost like an Eminem thing where I thought, yo, this guy is, this guy's amazing. Yeah. From the jump. I heard him. He would come to my house regularly, start freestyling. I have mixed, I should pull the mixtapes out. I have tapes of, of the guys riding early. Oh, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And my brother came up with the name Empire. For people who, no one probably knows this. Yeah. No one. Because we're big Star Wars fans. Ah. Me and my brother are Star Wars fans. Ah. You know the Black Empire? If no one knows who that, if you don't know, you're, you're, you're under a rock, right? Um. So one day he comes to me, he's like, yo, why don't we try and form a group called the Empire, man? We can get a whole bunch of guys together. And it looked, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. shit. That's, that's dope, all right. So from there, we just started getting guys together. That's eventually, we hooked up with Scandalous, Tech Man, Trey, and we would go to all these spots freestyling. Like this, these guys were like the kings of, Bars. Street freestyling yeah. type of thing. 
they were everywhere. Anywhere, any block, they could do it, they would. And that's where they got their name. We would go to, I, I would take Adam to all the radio stations at the time, blah, blah, blah. And that's how it started essentially, through freestyling in the streets. Oh, then they started putting on product, like mixtapes, all of that stuff. And that's where it started. Right? Unfortunately, it didn't end. Thank God they actually got to put out the one album. Yeah. Right? Thank God for that. But then, you know, like every other group, things happen sometimes. It didn't work out. Everyone's doing their solo thing now. Shout out to everyone who's out, you know, everyone. I respect what they're doing. But, yeah, that's how Empire started. Just Adam coming to my house. And from there, boom, it, it, it grew. That's crazy, man. That's it, man. That's actually insane. That's it. I was not expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> I got to give a shout out to my brother, man, because he came up with the name. You know, so I can't take credit for that. And so, and another question then, because uh, Noah Shabib, 40, 40, he produced for Empire as well. Well, that in the so early you know, days. Do you know Noah? Yep. How, what's it like to see him, you know From then to now, yeah. it's great. I played a song on the show earlier today, Buddha Session, that me and him did earlier. Oh, yeah? Back in the early, yeah. Yeah, I brought him, he knew all the technical things. I brought him the samples and stuff and said, do this, do this, do this. Yep. And that's what he, and he put it together. So... He was in his mom's basement, like we were in like a little little house, his mom's basement. He pretty much had nothing at the time. Tables and, and tables mixer and a computer at the time. That was pretty much it. Insane. And that's how we put Buddha session together. And he's a great guy, man. I I I I, I love the, all the success he's gotten. Support that. Yeah. Yeah, man. He's a great dude. It was Do you envy his success? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yep. Yep. <laughs> but you know, it started with the mixtapes that these guys did, and now he's gone from there to Drake, and it is what it is, it's man. That's it. That it is what it is. So yeah. Yeah, it's gotta be pretty incredible to see like one of the dudes, or you know what I mean, in the group that like yeah. when you first started, like go to a plateau like that. Like that's. I don't think at the time any of us thought that might happen. Like, no yeah. one's thinking like, yo. You know, I think he's every, gonna end up getting with somebody like Drake, and it's gonna turn to this. But I think everybody who does it and just does it right. for the love never thinks about yeah it what might happen. What might happen? They just do it. Yeah, they may be fans of music or <coughs> or whatever, but and want to be an artist. Yeah, but you don't think about. It happened. Yeah, for you're sure. Just, you're so sure. caught up in just doing it and enjoying it and loving it before you know what happens. Yeah. It's been a minute since I've seen a big ticket event. <laughs> <laughs> I just asked them today what's going on with that, but. Everybody wants these. Yeah, they want to know. Is there a they question or what's just, up? What's going on? Statement. <laughs> I don't know. It was. <laughs> well, it has been a minute. Yeah, I was kind of hoping for a follow up. So it, it has been a minute. I agree. Um, what's going on with that? Uh, what's going on with that? Big ticket, it's uh, four years. That's like a long time yeah. to be yeah. doing something. Sure. And um, if you follow big ticket, there's always been a continuous growth. Yeah. It all, we've always built and built and outdid, right? And set new goals. Yeah. So sometimes it takes longer to put that next goal together. Yeah. Than other goals, right? So the last big ticket we did in June, it was pretty big. It was a pretty big deal. And really prior to big that, big you had already kind of made space the mode even further, right? right? To make right, better right, and bigger right. events. So the next big ticket event is it's it'll be big. You'll know about it. Yeah. But the reality is, I don't want to do it anymore. Really? Yeah, that's the reality. I did it. I've been there, done that. I laid the blueprint, I showed cats what needs to be done, what has to be done, and why it needs to be done. Yeah. Right? I ran this whole campaign to keep it pro, and it was for a reason. Right. Right? And now there's a lot of cats out there keeping it pro, which is beautiful. Yeah. For right? Because sure. that's what our industry needs. Yeah. I'm involved in so many different projects. I got so many things that I'm working on. Right? Sometimes yeah. you got to, like, take a break from some. Mm -hmm. Right? Or just... End it. Yeah. All right? It's like a relationship. No matter how much you love someone. No one to walk away sometimes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to walk away. Know when. 
So having said that, um, I don't know, maybe I'm walking away. Ooh, or maybe there'll be another big ticket that's <laughs> going to be really big. Really popping. That's really big. Yeah. I would probably go with the latter because like, it's hard. Like I'm not that guy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> there will be another big ticket. There will be. There will be another big ticket, and yeah. it'll probably be the last big ticket. Okay. Or maybe big tickets in transitioning from a brand uh, to, from a event as we know it to mm -hmm. something else. Yeah. Right. So, big ticket is just one extension of the many things that I do. Yeah. So as long as I'm here, then things I'm involved in will always be there. Yeah. Right. It just sometimes you just gotta wait for it. Yeah. That's well, we're waiting for it. Yeah. Sure. That's good. That's good. That makes me feel good. It makes the team feel good. Yeah. You know what I mean? To know that people always ask for it. And well, the event I've wanted to walk away before. Pop. I wanted to walk away and I've told certain artists that. Right? And yeah. they're like, what are you talking about? You can't do that. Yeah. So to, to actually hear that and just, uh, and that person to be really sincere in what they're saying, that really, like, that uh, that really does mean something. Yeah. And that's like motivation to keep doing to keep, something. Keep it going, yeah. Right? Exactly. Like real talk. And I don't do it for me. It's not for me. Yeah. I'm not a rapper. I don't put on shows and put my picture on the flyer because I want to headline the show. Yeah. No. I put artists on. I put people that are doing it and provide a platform. That's what the whole team does. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So for people to really recognize the importance of that, that's, that's pretty dope. And that's for that reason... I don't think it will ever come to a complete end, but it's at the point now where it needs to be very selective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not to say that something else might not start up to take its place. Yeah. But Big Ticket is a brand now. Mm -hmm. just, right. It needs to be selective be of what it exactly. does as well too, right? You can't exactly. keep trying to throw a month of an event every month if you're not right. bringing what, yeah. Right. A top like notch event go. to live up like to. Like I thought, I thought when we did Fife Dog, we plateaued. Yeah. Right, because that was like, that was that great. still stands out to be, I think, the best big ticket. Yeah. Everything was beautiful that night. Right. It was just perfect. Packed out. It was fucking packed. Salute. And yeah. the fact that, that that was his last performance. Rest in peace. Was that his last? That was one his ever? last live performance. Wow. Right. Wow, Think about so that. that's a Salute big deal. for having me on that bill, eh? right? <laughs> oh, geez. So that's, a, that? so that's a big deal, right? But then I did that one, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I got to do bigger now, Yeah. right? So we did a few other things, and then, you know, then you got to get back. You know, there was a period where I was, okay, let me go south of the border and bring some acts up, right? Then it's like, okay, let me go back to just focusing on... Canada. Canada, Yeah. right? And if you look back over all the big tickets, there's always a theme to the big ticket. There's always a, a purpose of it, mm -hmm. right? Like the artists that are on the bill, or even the songs they're performing, there's always a theme, Yeah. right? And the perfect example is the big ticket in June. The theme was like new music. Yeah. Every artist that was on the bill performed new music and unreleased music. Okay. So Naturally Born Strangers, they perform music that hasn't been released yet. Oh. They're just working on a second album. Yep. And this was their like test market. Yeah, to that. see how people react. For new music. Tas oh. just released a brand new single, "Let's Go," and that mm -hmm. was the first time he's performed it with Adam Bomb and Tona oh, in front of a huge live audience. Right, so that's a first for that's them. That's crazy. So Big Tick was all about first. Dusty Wallace was celebrating a brand new LP and the launch of a clothing line. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Rich Kid, or sorry, not Rich Kid, Rochester. He had a brand new album that he just released. We're celebrating his album release. Yeah. Right? So he performed all new music with the exception of one track. Yeah. Right? So that was all new. Queens of the Game was the first time all those females were together on the stage. So that was something new. You understand? Yeah. Um, even uh, T. Grams and Dre Bars. Right? They got a brand new CD out that was coming out. Yeah. So it was the first time they performed songs from that. Oh, shit. So every big ticket is a fucking theme. The last one, when you get Juno winning artists, on your bill, we've had a few of them. Yeah. But I think that they really raised the bar. So now, I don't want to go south of the border. I'm going to keep it Canadian, but the next big ticket is going to be big. Yeah. Cool. That's all I got to say. About so that. I look forward to it, man. Sure. And um, actually, while you're talking there too, I've never really put two and two together. But I almost feel like, because you guys come from the old school, and you guys come from the Fleming and Park days, 
when like you know they would be bringing down artists and like big artists and this is all before all the pay to play bullshit right yeah, like yeah, you yeah. got props if you were worthy of props and you got asked to do a gig right yeah, or unless right. you're good at networking and you happen to know the people who are running the show right but either exactly. way two key fundamentals to being an artist networking and being dope <laughs> and uh, sure. with the pay to play i feel you don't get that anymore and that's actually the one thing i always loved about big ticket is it completely demolished the pay to play right. mold it you gave people tickets, right. you're like, sell what you can. Right. I'm not gonna, I'm not threatening to cut your set if you don't right. sell tickets. I'm not gonna t exactly. cut you short, I'm not, you know what I mean? But just try to sell some if you can, which is every artist's obligation. And I almost feel like you took that blueprint that was there from the old school days and you brought that back to the forefront at a time when it needed it most. That's exactly what I did. Yeah. That's exactly what I did because I've been there, done that. For sure. Right? So I saw the need for this. Someone needs to show. Because hip hop was just, it was lost for a minute. Yeah. Right? Especially, and in this city. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Man's are just doing random shit, but not really knowing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So it was a res I had a responsibility because I've been there, done that. I know the formula. I've been through a couple generations of this shit. Right? Yeah. So let me show you guys what's really good. Right? Yeah. So that's exactly, I'm surprised that you said that. That's good. But that's <laughs> exactly, that was exactly it. Yeah. I took what I already know works and showed mans them how to implement it. And like this is right? how it works. And, and everything, but that's the thing about the music successful. business. That's the thing about music business. Everybody complains about pop music, right? Mm -hmm. Pop music is manufactured because there's a formula that works. Yeah. Right? And if you follow that formula, you're going to be a pop artist. It's really that simple. Yeah. And music always goes around. Right. Yeah. So if you really know your history, and people talk about, oh, you gotta know the history of hip, of not just hip hop, but anything. Yeah. You gotta know the history in order to know your future. Know, yeah. So if you know the history of the music, then you're in an advantage of creating the future of the music. Yeah. Because really, you just gotta fucking recreate what sure. already worked. Yeah, you said that in the first interview too, I said, and I quoted you on my. Oh, did you? Did album. I? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you did quote you. <laughs> quote you in a song on the oh, for real? Scott Rock said, "Everything come back around." It's I heard you say. I listened to the CD. I heard that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but then I must be saying the truth, man. Yeah, if I said the same thing in two different interviews that took course over a couple of sure, years. Everything, fashion, everything. Everything comes back. Comes back man. Yeah. Right. So, I'm fortunate enough to have been able to like be there the whole time yeah and force and yeah see through right. all these different ways that's why none of you kids out there can throw shade and i'm talking to someone specifically ah, that they wow. can, oh the shade is real i told you when i saw you in edmonton oh, you cannot say anything true. to me or do anything to me that will ever affect me that's I it i appreciate your efforts but it's just i don't give a fuck mm. like you can't say nothing to me and i told you that i sat you down and told you that to your face mm. Stop. Dude, 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 like, yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Dude, 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 dude. <laughs> Yo, cue the Japanie music. <laughs> <laughs> the dread <Dragnet> intro. <laughs> and maybe I sound a little like egotistical or whatever, but it's not even that. It's just the reality of the situation. Yeah. Right? Like if you've been somewhere and you've done that, then no one can take that away from you. Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. Right? So keep doing what you're doing and eventually you'll be in that position. Tell the people a little bit about, re I mean, I guess not so recently, but you guys launched Max TV not too, too long ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Tell the people a little bit about that because we haven't talked to you since then. Right. So uh, Max TV, I guess that's just an extension of the, of the radio. Everybody wants visuals. And again, like I guess this is, this is the brainchild of Mike Boogie, right? Yeah. Shout out to Mike Boogie. Shout, Shout out to Boogie. Brother, uh, his brother Anthony. Shout out to Boogie. Right? Yeah. So they're like, they, they see like there's a void. Much music's not playing videos all day long anymore, but everybody's creating videos, especially here in Canada, we actually get government assistance to create good videos. Yeah. So we create these good videos and then what? We put them on YouTube? Cool. Put them yeah. on our website, that's cool, right? So they launched Max Now TV. There's four streaming video channels. So there's a dance, a pop, a hip hop, and a soul. So you get music videos 24 hours a day. Same thing with the radio, it's high in uh, Canadian content. And then there's two specialty channels, which is uh, MXM1 and 2. And we play documentaries, features, and we're developing original content. 
as well, right? So, and again, it's 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 to uh, build the infrastructure of hip hop, because if we can create jobs and get guys their own little TV shows and sell advertising and have money generated within the industry, that's what needs to happen. Then today. there is an industry again. The, exactly again, because yeah. now there's a scene. Yeah, there's well, a hip hop scene, there's an urban music scene, but it's not an industry. And we're in a position where we can help develop it. Yeah. Create it. What so are some of the uh, shows that you guys got dropping out of the box? Uh, on the so uh, Canadian, Canadian Creates TV is a big one. Uh, Boogie's already filmed his whole Se first, first season's season. done. Right, Shortcut was a guest on yep, one of the episodes. I'm going to be on one of the, the uh, episodes during that season. So now he's talking to Mike, too. Yes. No. No. Ah, no. 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 I was going to me. Fuck, I have to bring you back to that dark space. Fuck, the DJ doesn't talk to me. He talks to everybody but me. But yeah, <laughs> Canadian Craze TV, that's the first show. That's that's a big one. Uh, he's got I'm, the cooking show going too, right? There's a cooking, well, I don't know if we should say this, but... Oh, oh shit. Hey. Shoka talks too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? But I'm working on a, I'm working on a, uh, a round table show. So what's going to happen, and you guys have the exclusive on this, is I'm going to do a round table discussion live to air in a three to six show yeah. with about six or seven guests and talk about hip hop. Yo. That's what's up. Right? And we're going to film those discussions and then we're going to edit them and air them on Max TV. So there'll be a series of, of those as well. So that's another original program. Yo. And uh, again, submit your I ideas, idea. man. You know, we're, we're, I'm talking to a few different people about a few different things. Yeah. Right? So I'm, I'm always out there trying to get new TV shows the same way, you know, we got new radio shows and stuff. So yeah. just trying to do it. And that's what's up. I actually, I've seen you post a few things a little while ago that uh, really had me curious, especially one photo I might be scared about what you're about to say. I don't think so. Okay. But I have, to, okay. I have to know. All right. I'm, sh I'm aware that, you know, some of them, like, DOS effects may have been in an event or something where you're, I'm not sure. All, about all the, the old, like, the old school but pics? you and Nas. Yeah. Explain this story to me. It looks like you guys are on some street. Um, it looks like you just put it was, was written just, out. Again, what the fuck? like I said, that was like back in <laughs> Where the, did that come from? Back in the again, back in the nineties, it was all about just going everywhere. And I don't know if your viewers are gonna know about a guy named Apple, which Chris uh, Chris knows yeah, him course. very well. <laughs> um he had a store called Hardcore. Um, in the downtown area, yeah, and he was actually he was promoting acts at the time. He for, he was the first one to bring the whole Wu Tang. Oh shit! I have it on VHS. If yeah. anyone wants to buy it, Ooh, the first time they were ever in Toronto, <laughs> it, it, all all of them. Ooh. Um, but all these acts were going to his store from nah everyone. That summer was amazing. Like the summer of '94, '95 was amazing, just because we saw this happening and we were there. So I was going to hardcore. Nas was, uh, I caught him out. I caught him as he was, it, it looked like an outside shot, right? Yeah. I caught him as he was leaving. Oh shit. Yeah, just, that was it. Just, I think I had my man with We've been best the, friends ever since. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I, we, got, we got the pick, man. That was like, yeah, that was like, that was his first, that was his first time here, just after Real Matic. Okay. Shit. Yeah. Just I after Real Matic. Like fresh off Yeah. Off, it was just after Real Matic. Also, I know I know Apple didn't put the show together, but if you remember when Biggie first, the only yeah, time, not the first time, you, Biggie, you right? saw a picture, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I knew there was somebody uh, I was missing. The first time, one of them. The, uh, yeah, man. The first, that was his only time in, in Can I don't know about in Canada, but it was the first time in Toronto. Yeah. That show was crazy. Like, that, oh, that was yeah. crazy. I think someone that posted a flyer for that show. Trey, actually. Yep, from that was Stars. crazy. Yeah, he posted a flyer. Turntables got flyer. stolen. Lighting systems got broke, fights oh, broke yeah. out, it was crazy. So that summer was amazing, man. 93, 94, like that was just, everyone was coming through and Apple had the, at that time, like I gotta say, Apple was probably like the, one of the top promoters as far as bringing these guys down. Yeah. And that's what it was. Like these guys were here as their first albums came out, blah, 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 blah. And I was just there, like I said, trying to get my face out, trying to be seen as a hip hop head. Yeah. That's it. So you saw the pictures, man. Like yeah. that's what it is. You know, what's, man. you know what's funny about that story is is um what what that what that is right there. That's manifesting your destiny. 
right? So Sharka was a fan. He was a fan of the music. Yeah. So he went places. He yeah, went to in shows. Those early days. He wanted yeah. to meet artists, so he took pictures of them, took pictures with them, right? And yeah. now before you know it, he's the one. It's like I opened for I opened for a lot of He's staff. playing their yeah. music. <laughs> People are taking pictures of him. He right. interviewing him. He's the guy now. Yeah. Right. So I remember my basement. In my dad's place. <laughs> in my bedroom. We used to have all these pictures up from like Right On Magazine. And yeah, I had Word the pictures up, on my room too. Right? Uh, yeah. too. Right? Of all the, you know, the stars, Run DMC, or whoever yeah. it was, right? And I wanted to be like them. I was so vain that I even took pictures of myself and blew them up to that size. Ah, and, put them on, ah, and put them on the wall crazy. with them. Yeah. That's right? crazy. Because I really believed, and that's what I loved, and I was really into it. Yeah. Well, if you love right? this enough. And one time, I posted an old school picture that had those in the background, and my boy in Detroit, DJ Speed. Boom. Show. He said, uh, he's like, yo, he goes, if you, if those pictures weren't on your wall growing up, you ain't about that life. Exactly. And that's real talk, because what that means is like, I was about that life. Yeah. I wanted to be about that, you mm -hmm. know? And I believed it, and I lived it, and I saw myself in it. Yeah. Right? And now I am it. I'm in it. Right? So if you're not about that life, you're not about it. Exactly. If you're about it, then That's you're about it. it. That's yeah. really... That's it. You know, and it's the same thing with Shortcut. You see these pictures, you're like, yo, you got pictures with Biggie. Yeah, when like I show pictures, like, they, they yeah. bug out. Because he's like, about yo, that you life, man. Like, you know, and it's not about yeah, being, man. being a group, you're a fan. Yeah. He was like, no, like, I need to, like... I love this music so this much moment. that... I need to remember the moment. I need to yeah. be around these people, yeah. this environment. It's what I love. Yeah. And when you love something, you manifest yep. something that happens. And it's funny you say that, too, because before I ever, um, like, before I ever even thought of ever doing an interview with anybody or ever taking any sort of right like that i used to do the same shit i used to go like i remember you know what i mean going to classified shows and like fucking getting autographs from them get, get snapping pictures exactly. of fucking any rapper i could at any show i could like waiting for them after the show like an hour after like just by the stage till they walk right. out and i'm like yeah yeah right What's I up? the same thing at concert yeah right well, and now you're the guy promoting their music yeah exactly, exactly. you're the guy that their publicist is calling yeah to do an interview with and it's funny when I talk to class too, and I'll tell him like how far back I follow him, and it's See? almost like he doesn't believe it. You're like, right. Right. it was like, oh yeah, that's just like when I was Jay sixteen. Speaking right. of that, like when I first met Jay Root at Hardcore, yeah, it started from there. It began a relation. Like I've known him for like, often for like fifty, like fifteen years since you know. Yeah. Yeah, man. I. And that's just Jay saying, a great right? dude, man. And a good shout to Jay Root. Another thing you have to understand is like you can be about the life, but. You need to figure out where you fit in. Yeah. Exactly. You may not be like Shortcut said. He don't dance. He don't have graffiti. Skills. Yeah. I obviously can't rap you know or well. I don't say well, that you're he rap. Rap. <laughs> well, he was yeah. busting his drum but, and yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. You just got yeah. You just got to know where you fit right in. Time. You got so to know, know where you fit in, right? Yeah. So don't. you may not be the rap star, but you make a damn good artist manager or publicist yeah. or fucking interviewer or right? a &R guy right? or whatever yeah. there's so many other positions that are available and that you can make money at exactly right? the artist make, can make a lot of money but the artist is the last one to eat yeah everybody eats off the artist you just mentioned jay Ru the damager right well, no. yeah and no, i man. know that you dj for him as well too. right what kind of do you guys have a like a working relationship um <sighs> I mean, he's definitely tra he definitely travels overseas a lot more. So yeah. when he's here, that's a whole different thing. But he's in Toronto, like pretty. Yeah, right yeah. Right? When he is in Toronto, um, yeah, we get together, whatever, whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen him in a little while, like I said, because he's just so busy traveling. He's in Europe right now, I think. Actually, oh, Lord, eh? yeah. Um, but he was one of those guys from the jump who was just cool people man and like he's done like surprise i was at a gig once where i was playing and he came behind the dj booth tapped me on it i had no idea he was no idea nothing tapped me on the sound shoulder i i didn't know who i turned around i'm like oh shit jerry what's up blah 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 we get into an improv freestyle he lets me fuck, I run beats and he's, and he free, it's like in a small little club thing. Yeah. And he starts freestyling and shit. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Oh, like, I, you know, but he's, he's, he's definitely, he's definitely a legend, man. Like I, I got nothing but respect for Jay Wu, man. Like that's my man. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, hopefully he'll be back here real soon and we can do something, you know? So what up Jay Wu?
Word <laughs> up. What's up, man? All right, so you, you had uh, t-shirts and whatnot printed by Chill a few years back, a couple right. years back, and then I seen a ton of promotion uh, shows and whatnot you were involved with, so how did your uh, relationship come about with them? Again, it was just one of those things, people networking. If you're out and you're about and you see people, you just, you just, through the love of this music, you build relationships. We just were at different shows together, you know, and that's how it started. Then I hit him up, I realized he was making shirts and hats and blah, blah, blah. We talked, that's when he started doing the shirts. And, you know, like he's definitely still doing his thing with the clothing. You know, shout out to Chill, man, you're doing your thing. And, yeah, um, he's one of those guys out there that's, that's definitely making things happen. So you got to support your local artists doing their thing, whether it's clothing, music, whatever it might be. You got to support that. Because if you don't, it's not things, things will just fall apart, man, and there won't be no cohesiveness within this music. Support right? your local hustler, so, man. Yeah, support your local hustler. Canadian hip-hop is legit. Chill, yeah, man. No doubt, support the chill, man. He's doing his thing. And, yeah, it just, it, just, it just got together because we saw each other at shows, man. That's it. He's had me do a couple of shows for him as far as DJing, too. Yeah. And, yeah, that's it. That's how you... Nowadays, you got to be about... Networking. Yeah. Like, it can't be about being on your computer, being on your phone, solely thinking that's going to make things happen. It doesn't. You got to be out there, face to face with people, so they can see what you're about. Yeah. The whole internet thing's cool. The whole digital thing's cool, too, because that helps things build even more for you. But if you're not out there, actually connecting with the people, it doesn't matter. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's not going to matter. Because people might, people be like, okay, he's got some things out, but he's not. I can't see what I can't really, really, really see what he's doing as a person. So, chills, 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 good people, man. Yeah, that's how it happened. What is your favorite or rarest record that either of you own? Fuck, there's so many records. My just favorite. in here alone. Or, or, no. or like, or like I mean, like alone. a rarity sense though, like not your favorite to listen to, but just like rare. Damn, like got this, like you know how every collector has their gems, right? Like what is your gem? <sighs> Choose one. I don't or know, a couple. A, 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 gem, a gem to me like may not be like a record that nobody else has. It might be like a record everybody has. But to me, I love the song and the artist so much. Right. But um, as far as I guess, like from the collectors, you got well, you got to go with your first response. And when you ask that question for me, it would have to be uh, Schoolie D. Yeah. And like PSK. And you got the mm. PSK the record, on, eh? On the PSK. B side. And the reason, because I went down, I used to go down to uh, Star, I think it was Star Sound at the time, Star Sound Records, and every Thursday, because that's when the new records would yep. come in. Yep. Every they'd, Thursday. They'd get to the border on Tuesday, and they'd be in the store by Thursday. So every Thursday, you'd go down to your record store, you'd get all the new releases, and you'd ask them. The DJ would have, they might only have one copy of a record, and that's what happened in PSK. So the Schooly D record came in, mm. there was one copy, I was asking the DJ to play a couple of records for me, and he's like, check this one out, we just got in, there was only one copy. He put it on, boom, That's crazy. as soon as that came on, I was like, yo, give it me that, that record, take it off, give it to me, I took it, I bought it, and I was the first one to have that record for the longest time, oh, and my boy Howie D from Chick Dynasty, mm. he, uh, he's like, yeah, Howard, I know. I know you envy me over that record. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, I know. Right? But um, for me, that would have to be my... In my hip-hop collection, that's the record. That's a gem, though. Yeah. Like the original yeah. pressing of yeah, that. Like, damn. Exactly. That's dope. For me, I'm not going to go hip-hop. No? Because, no. Oh, because... Shit. This song, I heard on a... Back in the day, um, what was that store? There was a uh, clothing store that was just above Young and College. That's. And they sold records in there. No, but they also sold clothes. Um, I can't remember the name of the store, but I got a Funkmaster Flex tape, live, like it was a live club tape. And I heard this R and B song. You're gonna probably gonna think, okay, R and B, okay. No, that song's I song. heard, I heard this R and B song. I was like, this is crazy. And to this day, not many Toronto or Canadian guys even play it still. To yeah. this day. So, 
It took me, no word of a lie, ten, at least 10 years to find it on vinyl. This is how bad I wanted it. It took at least 10 years. This is before um, the internet too, right? Yep. Before <laughs> the internet, you actually all I that that's that's how real, you know? So one day I'm at, no. I, was, I, I had magazines, the rap pages, the I had even I had even European magazines, hip hop collection, uh, hip hop connection. There was an interview I saw in a magazine talking about this song, so that's how I found out who the artist was. Finally, I'm like, okay, I know who the artist is. It took forever though still to find the song on vinyl. I mean, played a record one day. If anyone knows where that is, a historic store in Toronto. Um, I'm looking through these like dollar bin type of things. I finally come up with this record. It's by the, and I'll actually just say, it's by a group called TFC Crew. And Red Hot Lover told who was down with the track master. Okay, yeah, yeah, 50 yeah. Cent become, he helped produce it and he rapped on it too. Oh shit. Um, I Ain't The One is the name of the song. I look, I'm looking, I see this song, I'm like, no way, this is the song. I go because play the record at this time as turntables, you can go and listen to the song right yeah. there. As soon as I heard it, I was ready to fucking like, like, just blame. Faint. I was yeah. gonna like go to faint because it took me so long. And, and again, the only time I ever heard this was on the Swamp Master Flex. So it's like shitty quality too. And yeah, like yeah, it, yeah, yeah. So I find this song the clarity. and I still have it to this day. I have the single to this day and it's in my computer too, but. <laughs> It's not a hip hop song, but for me, I don't love just hip hop. Yeah. I love all kinds of music. So for a song that obscure, nobody knows it probably. None of your listeners are gonna probably know this. You probably don't, don't even know, know it. I'm probably but, gonna drop uh, the joint after. Yeah, but for me, it was just about this song. I love it. I love it. So I'm gonna go on the hunt and do what it takes to find it. Yeah. And I did. At the end of the day, it took ten years. And you but I found got it. That. Yeah, man, I found it and. Yeah, that was, and that's it, man. It's in my collection now, and yeah. So that for me, that's that's the song for me. So on the other end of the spectrum, records that I don't have, the number one record that I don't have. That you want? And I got over like 6,000 records. And just in here alone. Covering, covering, every, covering every genre. Right. Right, from like 40s, probably earlier. Yeah. He's got one train right here. Up to the millennium. Oh, like, shit. 6,000 records I have in my collection. Right. And the one record that I don't have that and I've always wanted and, okay. and I used to run a record store. I used to sell records and okay. I still don't have this record. See? It's Mary J. Blige and Dr. Dre Family Affair. Really? I don't have it. <laughs> Yo, I, I wanted, the fuck you mean? I wanted <laughs> two copies of those for Is the longest time. Like, oh, that beat. Wow. That beats Banana. Yeah. <laughs> The right. P-Rock remix to me yeah, killed it. Trust me. The P-Rock remix was better. I don't have right. that record, man. Yeah. Let's get you don't have that record. She's on the cover. I have it. Yep. Oh, I can that, bitch that I have the record, open. man. Yeah, I don't have that fucking Maybe I'll sell it, man, if you want it bad enough, bro. If you want it bad enough, maybe I'll sell it. You know what happened I think we had like one copy left and I sold it to a dude thinking yeah. we were going to get more and we never got more. Oh. And I could never find it anywhere. Sometimes it's just old records, man. I had to, I back in the days when the internet yeah. was early, I had to That was the like, end of it for you. Yep. That was it. I, when yep. I, after, I, I couldn't put in 10 years to find that. Yeah. After, exactly. After see, years, there's the love. I'm done. I quit. Yeah. I respect it, but see, but that's how much I loved it. If I love a song, I'm going to go all in to find it. Yeah. I don't know how long it takes to find it. I used to be like that. I'm going to go do that with breaks. Yeah. For breaks. Oh, break, for breaks. Yeah. I was like, I'm a break right? guy, right? Like, most of my records are like old records and I break them. That were yeah. sampled for people who don't right. know what breaks so are. You hear, that were sampled. You hear a song and you know there's an original out there too, right? Yeah. So you right. search and search for that. Right. And you search for shit that hasn't been used yet and then you have it and then you hear somebody use it you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. Right? And that's right. why when you look at it, most guys who start out as DJs become producers. Exactly. That's exactly they have evolution. access to all. they got all the music, right? Yeah. And they hear all this old music and they're like, yo, if I take that and sample this, it's no different than these DJs that are getting paid thousands of dollars to play like Wembley Stadium or whatever. Yeah. Right? They're doing all these remixes and taking sounds and like Right. Right? So it's the same thing like the hip hop DJ, you know, you cut a record back and forth, you find the break. Yeah. And then instead of just rocking it, you're like, let me just create a whole new beat over it. Yeah. Right? So you know. What's your favorite break beat? My favorite? 
Well, there's the international, like the funky drummer, right? Everybody oh, yeah. Everybody uses that. Like, that's international. Um, I have to choose one. The big beat, maybe. Billy Squire. Yeah. Billy Squire. Or, or no, probably Peter, Peter Piper. Piper. <laughs> Peter Piper. What, right? Oh, the Bob James? No, the Bob James. The, uh, oh, take me to Monty yeah, Brown? Yeah, yeah. Take me to Monty right? Brown, the original. Because the original, it's a big tune. Yeah. yeah. Right? Even the, even the, um, Steve Miller, Fly Like an Eagle. Yep. Yeah. Do, 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 do. For no, me, that's like a big thing for me. I don't know, it's hard to say my favorite break. Fuck there's so many, like, there's, you can't just choose there's one. There's so many. I love the Honey Drippers break. The Honey Drippers, yeah. yeah. That's what you said, In Peace the President. Right? Yeah. In Peace the President, like that's a classic one. And Kwame, you still have my record. <laughs> he has my fucking doubles of that record. <laughs> Doubles. I and have doubles. He was doing a show and he wanted me to borrow wow. the, the record, so I lend it to him. Wow. And I never got it back. Yeah. And he knows um, that. This guy, yeah, I went, okay, to, so I went to his speed, premiere. Yeah. Mary Kelly. Um, there's so many out there, man, that that have been used and that are revered in hip hop, and that's what hip hop's all about, man. It's just about taking great music and turning it that's into your own. That's why I can't badge you for your taking music and reproducing it, and remastering it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right? That's part of what hip hop is. True. Exactly. It's taking shit that you love and like recreating it. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And the reality is the reality. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know the majority of the artists I know today if it wasn't for hip hop. Yeah. I'm the same way. For right? sure. You know what I'm saying? So I've put money in man's pocket because of hip hop. Yep. So I've bought Honey Drippers records. Yep. You know, I've bought Lionel Richie. Or I've right. bought. You know, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Say, yep. They bring these artists into your life. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Or just ready. Anybody, like, fuck Shaft, like, all these records. Yep. And if your uh, DJ style could be translated into a Mortal Kombat finishing move, custom your own uh, thing, what would it do to your opponent? I'll be honest. Uh, I'm not really. It might be sad. I'm not really a video game. Dude, would be a record so I don't throw. really. Uh, <laughs> so you make it up on your own. Yeah, if I can, uh, I use vinyl to slice a man's head off. <laughs> That's it. Like, you're like really man. Be like, boom. Oh, good. Slice a man's head off. That's it. Before we wrap it up, just let the people know one more time when they can catch the three to six show and anything else you would like them to know. Any ways they can contact both of y'all. I would like the ladies to know that I'm a Leo. Single. <laughs> yeah. so what I want you to really know is you can catch a three to six show every Saturday from, from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time. Catch the encore performance at 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. every Saturday myself. DJ Shortcut, we go live. We've got a lot of special guests. Dope music and silliness on the microphone. MaximumFM.ca. We support MaximumFM.ca or you can get the app. MaxFM app. Send me your music. Because we want to play it. And what can, what can I send the music to? Uh, play, me, play me at Max Norpole. Norpole. <laughs> <laughs> you care of Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, send it to play me at, at maximumfm.ca. Yeah. We keep it simple. That's send us it. your music. You want to get played? Send it to play me at maximumfm.ca. Properly labeled. Or you can see me at an event, buy me a beer, and then do the music, <laughs> and then take my contact. Yep. Exactly. The more beer you buy, the, the more best. spins you get. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Word up. All right, thank you very much, guys. Respect. Shout out to you guys, it. man. Breaking Records Radio, man. Breaking Records Radio. Woo! You guys from FM as well. I think you guys were like the first or second. Show we brought you. Were we? See, think, think about so. that. Double bad. Think yeah. about that. Breaking fucking records radio.